back. 2024. Drumming. Let's continue. Let's do this. What's up? Steve Holmes streaming live from Los Angeles here at the drum room here, the drum lab. We've got all our crazy gear. We've got all of our crazy drums. We've spent lots of crazy time dialing things in, getting things sounding decent. We streamed all last year, 2023. Pretty, uh, pretty interesting. We're going to try to keep it going. Maybe not as often, but, you know, keep the good thing going. That's, that's what I like to say. You know, share the information, archive my drumming growth, my drumming journey, my drumming blah. Um, archive it. Because there's going to be a day where I can't do this anymore. And it might be interesting to look back and see how much I sucked. <laughs> Anyways, hope everyone's having a good New Year so far. Cheers. We're going to do some drumming. We're going to warm up. We're going to do some uh, playing. We're going to play along to one of my favorite tracks. It's going to be fun. We're blasting to, uh, blasting to a couple different places here. I think we're blasting to Facebook. We're blasting to YouTube. Let's see. Are we blasting to Facebook? Let's check. Let's check. Dun, dun, dun. So, yes, we are. Look at that. We're blasting the Facebook. Let's check the YouTube stream. Leave those comments. Post those comments. Post that feedback. Let me know how it sounds. Let me know how it looks. Let me know. The streams are all about... Yeah, there it is. Okay. The streams are all about that interactivity. All right? It's all about that back and forth, the feedback, the thing that we get from the internet that you can't get from, like, television. Like Ritzman right now. Ritzman on YouTube says, Yo, yo, Steve, first comment. Yes, congratulations, Ritzman, first comment. I'd like to say this is the first stream of 2024, but it's not true. I did one last week, maybe. It did not go so well. <laughs> um, and so I deleted it, actually. I deleted it from most of my places, but there's a couple places I stream to where I leave all the bad streams up there, actually. So if anyone's interested in watching my bad streams then seek and ye shall find because like i said we're blasting into a couple different places um not a lot has changed with the setup here i uh, did some recording for a friend of mine uh, and so that was kind of a wake-up call to to uh, some changes i needed to make in terms of getting isolation uh, on a per drum level um for instance i moved both of my splashes here um onto like a, a separate stand they're not mounted on the bass drum anymore um because every time i hit the bass drum it was like ping ping like my splash was splashing a little bit <laughs> um and i kind of you know realized why people have drum racks you know to get the toms off the bass drum because the toms resonate when you hit the bass drum and stuff and it's like i'm not a session guy you know, I like to record music, I like to play music and stuff, but, you know, if I'm going to record tracks for other people, it's like, you got to have this stuff dialed in, you know, and so I'm I'm still learning about that, um, that process, and it's super interesting, super intriguing, super challenging, actually. Um, and that's just, like, the technical side of it, you know, much less receiving a track from someone and, and hey, come up with drum parts that are interesting and are, are good for the song, and... You know, that's something that we talk about here on the channel a lot um, that not a lot of other folks talk about, you know, that that mental process of like hearing music, coming up with the drum parts, you know, and then playing the drum parts, you know, um, it's 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 super interesting, super challenging, you know, because who's to say what drum parts best serve a tune, you know, and some folks might, you know, be that's your job is to is to find that out, which is crazy. Um, but it takes a lot of iteration and back and forth and listening to yourself and listening to the music and drumming with music in mind, I think, which is super important and super challenging, too, if you if you're the kind of drummer like me or a lot of other guys out there that are just working on drumming in general, you know, and you're trying to play whatever new cool stuff. And it's like you look for opportunities to play new cool stuff. But, you know, that might not be the best reason to play that stuff. You know, the, the, the best reason to play stuff is is for music, you know. Um, and so I recorded a tune from a friend of mine and, and, you know, we're in the process of going back and forth with it, but when it's done, I am going to share it with folks here on the stream and kind of walk through the process. And I made like a little, you know, charted it all out and then the whole thing and, and 
super fun, uh, super challenging. So what I'm going to do now is I'm, 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 I was going to warm up before I started streaming, but I decided to just start rolling and I'm just going to warm up now. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure the, the temptation to start like really playing stuff is going to kick in because I know that folks may be watching, but I really do need to warm up like motion wise and, 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 and just get, get loose and stuff. Um, and, you know, play a little bit, and then we're going to turn on a play-along track uh, that I haven't played to for a while that I really like. And uh, we'll see what happens. So we're just going to kind of go around the drums. And uh, let's see, can we get a, a decent camera angle here that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't have this thing, like, right in the way? Um, again, my name is Steve Holmes. Post those comments, you. Post the questions, post comments. This is a back and forth. This is a dialogue. All right, uh, this is a dialogue on the internet. Uh, so I'm gonna play and uh, let me know how it sounds. Let me know how it looks. We gotta get the uh, the camera switcher going here. We've got a couple of cameras and we need to turn that on. So let's do that. All right, the camera switcher is officially on and uh, I'm gonna do some playing, some warming up and then I'll turn on the track. Meanwhile, think about those questions and uh, what you guys wanna talk about and we'll talk about it. All right, here we go.
All right. That's enough of that nonsense. What am I even doing? I'm like almost 50. What am I even, you know? Why do I even bother? Man, the sticks are feeling heavy today. <laughs> sticks are feeling heavy. Yeah, see, this is why, this is why, like, you get older and every time you do this, like, it feels different, you know? It feels different, so it's, it's interesting to try to, like, okay, pull out, you know, keep it cruising altitude, you know? It's, 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 uh, it's fun, pardon me. Yeah. What's up? It's Steve Holmes. We're streaming live from Los Angeles. We're trying to drum. We're trying. Cheers. I know this floor tom is not like, sounds a little odd. I've been wrestling with it. Having a little more, having different issues with the drum sound, with the coated ambassador versus the clear ambassadors that we had earlier, right? We changed the heads, uh, I don't know, a month ago maybe. I stream the whole thing for folks that are interested in changing heads and tuning and stuff. Uh, so if you're not hip to my YouTube channel, please head on over. Head on over to the YouTube channel and subscribe. There it is. Come on. What is going on? Look at all these videos here. Drum lessons galore. All free. All right. So check it out. Sign up for YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, what... What is going on here? All so, free. Whoa. All right. So check it out. Some guy. Sign up for YouTube. Hit that subscribe talking. button. Whoa. What are you? Why are you? And uh, what? What is going on here? How so come? Like, whoa. All right. Well, there's another guy. Some guy. Sign up for YouTube. Hit that subscribe uh, button. Okay. That's Why enough. Are Why are you? That's enough. We can only take one. One Steve is plenty. All right. There's no need to. There's no need to have more than one of me blabbering. Blabbering being the key word. Anyway. <clears throat> that's where we are. We've been doing this for a while, so there's a lot of content up there. You get to watch me, you know, whatever. Get better, get worse. Just drum. That's that's the point. That is the point. So, uh, thanks for hanging out. Let's see what folks are saying. We've got a couple of, couple of comments. Let's see. Joel Prescott on Facebook says, get the blood pumping. Yes, we're trying, man. We are trying. Robert Labori says, how many symbols do you have? The answer is yes. <laughs> Joe Pito digging the split screen. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with two cameras to make it seem like you have like this whole thing going. Uh, Bo Markley on Facebook. Thanks for hanging out, Bo. Bo says, hey, Steve, glad I could tune in. Oh, we see you play things. I wonder what the heck was that sticking? I'm not even sure how to ask him to define that sticking. Well, I mean, it, it depends on the phrase, Bo. It's like phrase by phrase, you know, thing by thing. You know, but I will say that very rarely am I playing more than two notes on a hand. Sometimes I am. But a majority of the stuff is like, you know, it's singles or doubles. You know, just in various combinations over various subdivisions. That's the key. Really, this, the, the key for, for the style that I like to play is being able to improvise accents and kind of double or fill in all the notes between those accents on various subdivisions. You know, there's only so many. Eighth notes, sixteenth notes, eighth note triplets, sixteenth note triplets, thirty second notes. You don't even have to worry about quintuplets or septuplets, you know? You don't even have to worry about those. <laughs> um and there's plenty of videos on my channel that talk about, you know, I have like a three three video little mini series about like double stroke roll phrasing and stuff that talks about all of this. There's lots of stuff out there, not just mine. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys that have, you know, Patreons and, and, and subscription things and, and, and all kinds of stuff, you know. Um, and people keep 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 opening them up. Everyone's got a everyone's got an online school. And I don't charge money for any of my content, but I do encourage folks to support. Uh, in the description of almost every video, there's a, a link, a link tree link, like linktree.com slash whatever. And that takes you to a place that that has options for supporting which I encourage folks to do because I don't have like a Patreon or online school. But just to mention some that come to mind, like if folks want to get serious about like studying online, 
besides my material, of course. I mean, um, Louis Palmer has a great online um, Patreon and just straight up like school. Uh, Google Louis Palmer. He's an amazing drummer. Steve Haas, H-A-S-S, -S, I think. I hope. <laughs> I don't think there's two A's in Steve's name. Steve is an L.A. drummer who's working, actually working all the time, gigging with all kinds of people. He's got an online school going. Um, that's interesting. It's kind of like, you know, in the in the context of nowadays where everyone's got the shiny production and the, and the dialed in drum sound, you know, myself included, I'm trying to go for that. But Steve's thing is kind of a it's I want to say like lo fi, but that that makes it sound bad. It's not it's like more of a grounded real world approach. Like here's what the drums sound like, here's what it sounds like like when I play this amazing stuff. And and Steve is an amazing drummer and has a career to back it up. And so anyone that, that wants the perspective of like a working drummer in Los Angeles with tons of online content, definitely check out Steve Haas. Obviously Dave Weckel's school is is amazing if you want to you know, go through that checklist of, of WEC stuff. You know, a lot of us over the years have kind of followed Dave and have gone through that checklist. But if you haven't, it would be silly not to take advantage of that. Dave has so much material on his school. You just sign up and cancel at any time. You know, a lot of these you can. You just sign up and just cram for a month. You know, Drumeo has tons of stuff. You know, um, yeah, lots of guys out there. Um, let's see. So that's my answer for Bo. Um, got some nice compliments from people. Joe, Joe Pito, Pieto on Facebook. Joe, hope you're doing well, man. I apologize for my drumming. That was, that was, you know, blah. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I, I watch your jam session stuff, all your pictures and, you know, the occasional videos and you're just playing so much and you're an amazing drummer and I appreciate you following me. Victor Lippman on YouTube. What's up, Victor? <laughs> Victor, thanks for, um, Thanks for following. Walter Valdez on Facebook. Nice work, Steve. Thanks. Thanks, Walter. I think that's that's about right. Just nice work. Just, you know, it's work. It's nice. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Flavio Lima on YouTube says, yeah, hugs from Brazil. Man, Flavio, what is going on? Uh, someone from Twitch, Demorian on Twitch.tv, which we are blessed into. Great work. Thanks for the music. Thank you, Demorian. Demorian, if you could tell all your Twitch friends to subscribe to my Twitch channel, that would be great. I do not have a lot of Twitch followers. Uh, Ritzman on YouTube says, great stuff. Thank you, Rowan Burrow on YouTube. The heavier the sticks, the fluffiest the towel. That's funny. Uh, Radio Zeitgeist says, uh, howdy from Austin, Steve. Tom F. here. Uh, the Jeff Miley friend from the 80s. Happy 2024. Uh, can someone tell Vinny to lose the huge belly? What? Okay. <laughs> let let people be. Let people be who they are. Um, all right. So, hope folks are doing well. We're caught up for the comments for now. We played. We played a lot. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what else to play. Um, I've been thinking about... I've talked about this before on my... Um, on my streams you know and i'm probably going to do a video on this at some point um but man there's just so much you can do with paradiddles and no one really talks about stuff you can do with paradiddles that you can actually do like that's applicable to your own playing or to a gig or or in a soloing context you know most most paradiddle videos are like hey you know turn on some music and just play only paradiddles and it, everything sounds like, you know, everything sounds like, you know. Um, which is not really applicable. It's not really useful. It's not like something you can play in the real world. I mean, it's an interesting challenge and what have you. But but over the, over the last few years, I've encountered, um, you know, a couple different things, a couple different systems, actually. Uh, my cousin's calling, but we're not going to pick up. Sorry. Sorry, Rum. Um, over 30 second notes and over 60 note triplets um, that you can do with paradiddles um, that is, is super helpful, super useful. And you saw me like warming up at the beginning. You know, my favorite warm up these, these days over top of 60 note triplets, you know, you do like singles, doubles, and then paradiddles. The thing is, if you play uh, paradiddles over 60 note triplets, you're actually, you're actually playing groups of four. So groups of four 60 note triplets, you're going to accent the quarter note triplet, right? Um, and so, you know, with that same principle, you know, if you can accent the quarter note triplet, then you can accent other kind of simple phrases over top of 
1600 triplets, right? So let me demonstrate one of those. Uh, I'll try to arrive at a simple phrase and I'll play it really slow. Um, and it's going to be either a combination of paradiddles, double paradiddles, or paradiddle diddles, you know. Um, and the first stroke of the paradiddle, I tend to accent, you know, those are the accents of the phrase, right? And again, this is the kind of thing that a lot of people talk about, but I ha not a lot of guys, not a lot of folks, I should say, really capitalize on this. Because if you work on it, you start to hear phrases in your head, you can just kind of improvise over top of triplets, you know, and just, you know, use paradiddles. And you can come up with all kinds of fills. People are always like, oh, you know, what fills do I play? How do I come up with fills? And it's not about like, it's not about coming up with fills. It's about being able to play like for several bars at a time within a subdivision. And if you can do that, then it's easy to just play one bar, you know? So let me kind of shut up and, 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 uh, and uh, see if I can demonstrate one of those phrases, okay? So again, like paradiddle stuff over 16 or triplets, you know, this is what we're talking about. Should we do the multi for this? Should we do the multi? Sure, let's do the multi, let's do this, that works. So give me a minute, give me a second, you know, some time to, to kind of arrive at a phrase that, that I think is a good example, and then I'll spell it out. Actually, you know what? I know a phrase I'll do. This is the phrase that kind of got me started with this. It's like a, a basic 6-8 phrase, right? Like... Right? But accent that over 16 note triplets using paradiddles. Right, that's doing it over singles. Now we do paradiddles, make it easier. So at the end there, I played another phrase. I kind of strayed from 
uh, from it. But but you can see, like, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking about bash, bash, ba, bash, bash, ba, because that's a very common 680 kind of thing, right? Very, very common. Um, but, you know, putting it over, putting it over paradiddles and, and, and most folks will even like, they'll stop there or they'll, 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 you know, put the accents in one place and they'll just kind of stop there. But, but I would encourage folks to like, put the accents all over the place, experiment with different voices because one phrase can sound incredibly different if you're putting the accents on short voices versus longer voices, you know, or putting it on the hi-hat and the snare together, you know, like I did at the end there. It almost sounded like a drum and bass thing. It's all the same sticking. And I'm just thinking dash, dash, da, dash, dash, da. You know, that's all I'm thinking about. And I, you know, you can play it in different contexts. You know, play it to a shovel, play it to jazz, play it to straight eighth stuff. You know what I mean? As long as the, as long as the, the, um, you know, 16 or triplets sound, you know, decent at that tempo, right? Sorry, I'm looking for my drum key. <laughs> oh, man. Drum key is missing an action. Oh well, looks like we won't be looks like we won't be tuning up the snare. Where did I put the friggin' drum key? Oh, oh, that's not the drum key. Those are my glasses. Alright, well, this is what happens with real world streaming. Anyway, let's see what folks are saying. If this is useful to some folks. Uh, let's see, do you have some things that helped you speak? Especially on the timing aspect, says Victor Lippmann. I practice a lot, and I live in situations I tend to feel the tempo often a bit higher. Yeah, you're talking about like playing on top, right, or pushing, right, when you say, you know, feeling it a bit. I mean, do I have some things that helped? Yeah, just practicing to a click. You know, that's what helped. And, and, and thinking about the space between the notes and realizing that it's the space between the notes that dictates the time, not the notes themselves, you know. You know, I've said this before, but I mean, that's the answer to the question. You know, like if you have two notes or three notes rather, and, and you know, the space between notes one and two is the same as the space between notes two and three, then those notes are equally in time. But if that space is different at all, that's going to affect the time and that you can just paint everything with that brush. You know, what I mean, it's, a, it's about understanding that and respecting that and harnessing that when you play, harnessing the space, not the notes. Anyone can anyone can hit a thing. You know, anyone can hit something with a couple of sticks, you know. Not hitting a thing for the amount of time that you don't want to hit it, that's challenging, you know. So turn on the click and program the click to be, you know, not on all the time, you know. Have a two-bar phrase on your click and have one bar be the click and one bar be nothing. And practice it at like 60 BPM. And don't subdivide, you know, don't, don't like play double time kind of phrasing like play at 60 boom ba go bo bo ba you know listen to listen to music that has like good good groove and good pocket even some program stuff even some program stuff can have like a really good feel you know some of that you know Sade stuff that really kind of helped me it kind of pushed me in that direction to realizing you know what what we're talking about now you know um she had that one hit, but that's not the not smooth operator. She uh something uh smooth operator sweetest taboo. No, there was uh, I forget the name of the tune. Oh my god, cherish cherish the day cherish the day. Anyway, yeah, that's like a slow I mean shot like that kind of thing. That's the kind of grooves I'm talking about. You know, Dennis is my favorite guy with this stuff. Dennis is my favorite drummer when it comes to this stuff. The slow kind of pocket. Rock solid time, you know. There's a uh, see if we can. Um, I'll play you an example. Um, geez, I don't know the name of the tune. Maybe I can. Oh, here we go. There might be an advertisement up front. Stand by. Yep. Can you hear this?
Okay, come on, come on. There's a great example, great example of like space between the notes, rock solid. That's a slow three for folks that are not hip to that. That was like a one, two, three. All right, that, that's what that was. And that's a great, great example. Um, Victor um, further talking about, he says, yeah, always with a click, even with gigs and a click, I'm backing tracks and the ear monitors. Sometimes I just feel the global tempo a little higher. Yeah, it's because you tend to play on top, Victor. That I mean, people have a natural tendency. You know, a lot of people they tend they, their their default state is is to push or pull or everyone has a default state. Most I don't think I've talked to a lot of drummers that are like, I tend to push and sometimes I tend to pull. Now everyone tends to do one thing, and you tend to play on top. So you know, realize that. You know. I love that that slow thing on three. We got to do some of that right now. We gotta we gotta do it. Yeah, and I'm not even a hundred, like, that was not to a click, that was just me trying, you know, but that, but there's a good example, and I feel like we've, you know, we've kind of addressed your thing, Victor, but, but it's worth, you know, kind of reinforcing, you know, we talk about time and respecting the space between the notes and, and letting the music happen and letting the whole thing breathe, the slower it is, the more space it has to breathe, you know, um, uh, Let's see. So tell me, is that right, left, right, left, right, left, left with accents? Uh, are we talking about the the phrase that I was playing before? Uh, let's see. Eric IDK on YouTube says, do you still use Radiant? He's talking about our tools at work. That is confidential, sir. <laughs> Sorry. No, I can't. I can't talk about that kind of stuff. That's I can't, I can't ever talk about anything at work or video game industry related that's not already public knowledge because I'm under NDAs and that's how NDAs work. And a lot of people tend to forget that, you know, NDA means non-disclosure agreement. You know, you sign that, it means you're not supposed to talk about that stuff. And some people are just kind of like, hey, they're on the internet on Twitter, like, hey, blah, blah, they're talking about, it's like, dude, you're under NDA. <laughs> what are you doing? Um, da -da 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 -da. Sorry, I want to address the question from Bad Habits Twenty Five. Um, I mean that phrase I was playing before. I mean, like it's it's I kind of spelled it out really slow, like the six eight pattern over the, over the, over the triplets, right? It's it's two single paradiddles, right? Two single paradiddles. Do we have? Yes. Let's use. Let's use brushes. 
Those brushes with the laptop mic are not that are not that loud. Let me spell out the sticking for that six eight thing. All right, it's two single paradiddles, right? Paradiddle, paradiddle, right? Followed by a para paradiddle, right? Right-handed para paradiddle, para paradiddle. Followed by a left-handed, yeah, followed by two, uh, a left-handed single paradiddle, right? So two singles, a double, and a single. Right? Followed by a paradiddle diddle, right? So single paradiddle, right? Single paradiddle, left. Double paradiddle, right. Single paradiddle left, paradiddle diddle right. That's exactly what it is. The trick is it's over top of triplets. Oops, sorry. There it is. Three, four. Right? So get comfortable doing that and then put those accents all over the place. That's that's what we're talking about. Right? We're going between two topics now. We're kind of going back and forth. We're talking about like accenting over 16 and triples with paradiddles. But we're also talking about like time and 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 you know, groove and time and slow time and stuff. We're kind of ping-ponging between these two topics. Which is impressive, I think. <laughs> uh, okay, so Bad Habits 25 has the sticking. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that Willis tune is such a great example. You know? And they like to play in three on that record, man. There's a couple other tracks, you know, in three. If you guys don't have Gary Willis bent, right? Gary Willis is bass player. His CD... Is called Bent, or his album, or his record. Just get it. It's so good. Dennis Chambers is just so killing on there. Crazy. Uh, Floyd Zeppelin says, anyone got insight into my flutter situation? Uh, Floyd, what did you say earlier? I'm getting a flutter sound for my 12-inch Tom. What's wrong with it? Are the intervals between the heads off? Probably. You need to take the heads off and start from scratch, Floyd. I mean, I, it's 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 a thing you know take off the top head completely start with the bottom head get the bottom head tuned to the note that you want make sure it's a note that your drum is compatible with and make sure it's a note that your drum is okay with you know then put on put on the top head you know and 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 start like start with nothing and then slowly bring it up and just try to find the two tones that don't you know that don't conflict you know, but I know what you're talking about. I actually might, might, that's not horrible. I spent a lot of time like trying to get the strings to sound recently, you know. I find that I'm having more, it's more of a challenge to, to maintain with the coded ambassadors. And I'm still not happy with the 16, like in terms of the sound that I'm getting, you know. Um, but it's an ongoing thing. It's a process. This is why we're doing this. This is why we're working on it. This is why I'm streaming. To share. Floyd says, uh, thanks. I have started over twice. I ended up in the same spot. Yeah, and then, then start then do different heads, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Try different heads. What heads are you using, Floyd? You know? Uh, Bad Habits 25 says, I'm interested in lessons. I mean, this is it. Watch every video on my channel. Become an authority on all those lessons, and then, if I'm convinced you've done that, I will take you under my wing and give you private lessons. Or I'll give you private lessons right now if you're extremely wealthy. Just kidding. Actually, I'm not kidding. But, I don't know, I find that doing lessons, like, are you, if you're in Los Angeles, you can email me. Uh, steveholmes at gmail.com. You can email me. And uh, we'll take it from there, if anyone's interested in private lessons. All right, Floyd is still struggling. Yeah, he's got uh, Emperors over Ambassadors. Yeah. It, oh, Emperors. Okay, yeah, I haven't used Emperor 
for a while. Clear over coded. Well, your code is on top, obviously, right? Coded emperor? Yeah. I wouldn't be doing that. I, 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 I wouldn't. I would do coded ambassador or clear ambassador. I mean, it depends, obviously, to each his own. But um, not really a fan of the emperors, you know? Not really a fan. Or try, you know, clear instead of instead of coded, you know? Uh, let's do another, let's do another, like, paradiddle phrase. I'll see if I can come up with one. Over top of 16 no triplets. You know, like, another good way to get started with this is play 16 no triplets, just play paradiddles, and then just play, like, para, like, para paradiddles on each hand. You know? Very simple. Single paradiddles, para paradiddles over 16 no triplets, but, like, put them, put them all over. That's the thing that folks don't do. You put them all over, you come up with cool fills, that's how you do it. Let's do some.
All right, so more just improvising. But I tried to keep it limited to the things we talked about, right? I was playing that pattern, dust, dust, ja, just, ja, just, ja. I was playing single paradiddles, and I was just playing uh, double paradiddles, or para paradiddles, whatever you want to call them, right? And again, like, you know, boom, boom, for the para. And then I started to, when I was playing the para, which is right, left, I started doing right and then a foot for that second stroke, which if you do in succession, starts to do the like step -da 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 -da, like the Tony Williams Vinny stuff, you know? Um, so again, it, it's like, approach this stuff like a system, approach this stuff like a concept that you can work on and literally improvise within instead of like, here's a sticking, here's a lick. It has to abide by this sticking. It's supposed to sound like that. Like, no, 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 no. You know? Milk it <laughs> for all it's worth. You can get tons of stuff out of this. You know? And, 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 and jazz drummers that, like, oh, I need to trade and come up with stuff for it. Like, this is going to help you come up with bars and bars. So you can trade fours, eights, 12, 16, whatever. You know? And we're not even, we don't really, we're not getting the foot involved, you know, that, that much. You know? It's just, and it's great for the hands. And we're talking about trip, like, it, paradiddles over triplets it's like you know we're not even talking about 30 second notes yet you know that's that's a whole other thing you know hey it's uh julian fernandez says what's up steve sounding good as usual thank you julian good to see you thanks for hanging out i really appreciate it uh tamburini on youtube says howdy what's up tamburini i like your name nick on youtube says in a musical applications those combos are rare soloing i guess it's cool you know I mean, it, it depends on, it's up to you, you know, it's up to you, you know, come up with a one bar phrase, come up with it. That's what I did. Like when I was playing the, you know, the single parrot diddles, you know, I played it for half a bar and then I just came out with some triplets. I was like, does, 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 that's a reasonable fill, you know, albeit it's a little busy, but, you know, and I really want to find my drum key. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's not on the drum, it's not on this drum, it's got to be on the ground somewhere. Oh man, and one of the, one of the lugs came out of my bottom snare head. That's no good. I love my snare drum, but, you know. Alright. We're making it work. We are making it work. It's definitely not in my pocket. What an entertaining drum stream. Hey, did you guys Steve's did you guys see Steve's drum stream the other day? He spent the whole time looking for his drum key. <laughs> oh man, what kind of drummer only has one key, actually? This is kind of embarrassing. I apologize on behalf of myself. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. Uh yeah, talking about coming up with fills with this stuff. Uh, let's see. Floyd says, I was taught that you have to be able to hear it in order to play it. Even if you don't technically know what it is. And of course, it has to feel good. Of yeah, I mean, everything you play should should not feel bad, right? So that means it has to feel good. Um, but yeah, I mean... I have to hear it before I play it. I mean, that that's just another way of saying... You know, hey, I found my drum key. Uh, it's just another way of saying, I know, I know what I intend to play before I play it. And to that, I would say, of course. You know, of course. Otherwise, you're just going to start playing with no intention. That's not good. Don't just start playing with no intention. I mean, actually, a lot of guys do that. It's a pretty common thing. And sure, that can yield results, maybe good results, but... You know, um, I prefer to have an intention. And sometimes, I mean, to be fair, this is my new snare drum, by the way. I love this drum. This is my new Dunnit, Dunnit titanium snare drum. Love this. Um, love this drum. Oops, sorry. We're going to leave it there. I put the drum key back on the floor tom. So you guys can remind me later on. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll start 
I'll start like with a phrase that I know and that'll get me like two or three, two or three counts. But then like, you know, you have, you know, you have the count of four to deal with. And so you just deal with it, you know, and you get to the point where you can just do that. You know, that's what I did with those single paradiddles. You know, I was like, baz, daz, baz, daz, da, 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 ba. right. I was like, da, da, ba. but I had to figure out the sticking to keep those strokes going to get to count four, you know, let's look at that again. Let's look at that, uh, that, uh, phrase again. It's a very simple phrase, but you know, it's a good example of paradiddles in a fill. So with the brushes, right, with the brushes, which are right here, you know, it's like single paradiddles that end on a left, right? Right, is the talk mic on? Yes. But that last left is a paradiddle diddle. Paradiddle diddle. Right, which gets us to the count of four. And on the count of four, I'm just playing three uh, eighth note triplets, you know? But I'm starting with the left hand because that's where that paradiddle diddle has left us. just an example of a cool field that you can come up with when you experiment with this stuff you know um, so that's over 16 note triplets you know uh, I first got into this stuff by playing 32nd notes because my 32nd note my 32nd note like ability to to, to, to play on that subdivision and feel comfortable kind of sucks it still sucks but but I've gotten a little traction with that you know um, and you know Virgil, you know, Vinny, these kind of guys, they spend a lot of time playing like paradiddle oriented phrases over 30 second notes. And I find that to be hugely beneficial. So just to start with, if you're playing 30 seconds, it's eight notes per quarter note, right? And if you play paradiddles, you're accenting the eighth note, you know, right? Which sounds like this. Let's see if anyone has any questions before I start playing that. It's in your pocket. He's talking about the, <laughs> talking about the drum key. Uh, let's see. Okay, so more 30 seconds. Let me demonstrate that, what I mean. Well, sorry, I had the talking mic off. Talking about paradiddles over 30 second notes, right? 
all I did was play single paradiddles, and then at the end I played like paradiddle diddles, right? There's actually a system for this. Like if you take like the Ted Reed, page 38, page 37, you know, eighth note gets a para, quarter note gets a paradiddle, eighth note rest gets a diddle, etc. You know, you just basic eighth note phrases, but over top of 32nd notes. And again, just like with the triplets, the goal is not to arrive at some, you know, scriptured strict sticking that you have to stick to. The goal is to get comfortable improvising with accents and just filling stuff in with paradiddles. Right? So let me play some of that.
Alright, it's super important. Like, it is a simple thing. But, you're just filling in the notes. But this phrase is simple. Da, 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 Putting it all over, and then at the end, I was like, let's split it up between the right symbol and the high end. I tried to make it grow out of it, and I had to really slow it down to, to get my limbs familiar with how that feels. You know? That's the process. That's how I would work on that if I was, like, practicing it by myself, you know? But again, like, it's a concept. It's a system. It's not one lick, one sticking, you know? And it, the benefit of that is, like, this concept or this system can get you tons of fill. It can get you able to just sit down and solo, you know, or play a phrase for more than three or four bars without struggling, you know, because at the end of the day, it's all about, it's all about accents and filling in the rest and being comfortable doing that on all subdivisions, period, the end. Just kidding. <laughs> that was like, that's like the streaming version of the dial tone, like, ooh, you know, <laughs> I hung up on you. Da, 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 da. What else? What else are folks saying? Play it slower. I tried to play. I tried to play that stuff really slow. I hope I did. Ryan Cox on YouTube says, "Steve, I notice that you drive your left stick with your thumb. Any thoughts on the role of the left index finger, man?" Uh, um, you know, uh, I'm kind of hesitant to to give advice on traditional grip. Um. Because the older I get, the more <laughs> I can feel it's going to be one of those things that's going to be harder to do. You know, I feel like I feel like match grip will give out less, but traditional grip will give out like quicker when you get older. You know, but I mean, that's just my personal experience. I can feel it starting to like, you know. I mean, obviously, I mean. Strengths and weaknesses, like I always say, one thing is not better than the other. Each thing has strengths and weaknesses and whatever works for you, you know. And I enjoy the benefits of traditional grip, you know. But to answer your question, you know, I drive the left stick with, with my thumb. Any thoughts on the roll on, on the index finger? You know, I'm just at the point now where I'm just automatic pilot. I'm not even thinking about it. I mean, I use the index finger when I'm using, you know, fingers, you know, when I'm, when I'm playing, you know, notes in succession, when I'm getting the rebound, when I'm getting the bounce, like, let me see, let me just start playing and like, I'll pay attention to what's happening. Like, I can feel the fingers, I mean, you can't really tell, but but they definitely have, on those two notes, after the 16th notes, you know, boudadette. You know, I feel like the le the index fingers definitely plays a big part in guiding, in guiding the stick. It would be, it would, it, this feels horrible. Taking my index finger off the stick feels horrible. So that, that should tell you a lot in terms of its role, you know, like just having it on the stick. Like, it really is guiding. The middle finger, the index finger, the thumb, you know, it's all guiding, you know. And just to say it, like, this is where the, the fulcrum, like, it's not like I'm not holding here, like, squeeze with thumb, twist wrist, get used to that, like, place fingers above and below, wrist, arm, fingers, like, that's it. That's all there is to traditional grip, you know. But it depends on <clears throat> the volume of the notes, the succession of the notes, how many notes I'm playing. That that depends on like what's what's driving right now. Fingers, thumb, hand, wrist, like what's driving right now. You know, the the answer is get them all in a good place and they'll all do their job when they have to.
sorry, that phrase really felt uncomfortable <laughs> at the end, and so I just did it over and over. Um, it's been a while since I played that that phrase, and I like it. It's like a good way to play 16 initial, but starts with a single foot instead of a double, which I like anyways. Like I said, it depends on, you know, what I ask of my hand. And my hand will respond with, oh, you want this? Okay. 20% fingers, 30% thumb, like whatever. You know? But, uh, but it's worth mentioning that I have worked on those things individually to work them out so that they can, they can do their job. If it, like, you know, I've, I've spent time just, just, you know, working on fingers, you know, palm down, dribbling. Both fingers together, each finger individually, you know, and also spend time, like, just with the thumb. You know, just to get the, keep the stick moving, you know. So just kind of improvising with some fairly intense double stroke and flam oriented phrasing because that will, that will hopefully demonstrate like what's happening with the left hand as well as the right. That stuff is fun, man. I love that kind of phrasing. Um, <clears throat> what else are folks saying? Man, good questions today. Good questions Today is the talking mic on? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, volume. Everyone's like, hey, you forgot to turn on. Yes. Okay. Double parent did a lick. Uh, thank you for the great lesson. How often are these live streams just, I don't know, once every couple of weeks, every three weeks, every week? It depends. You know? Uh, Furby Nerd 76 says song requests. You can try. Chances are, <laughs> chances are I won't like. Oh man. Chances are I won't know the song, um, but yeah, who knows? Maybe song requests is a good idea. <laughs> uh, Floyd Zeppelin says, "How do you feel about Snarky Puppy and playing towards that style? Any tips? I mean, not really." Uh, furry, sir. Furby Nerd seventy six has followed. Thank you, Furry Bird seventy six. I appreciate it. I need I need the followers on Twitch. Um, man, Snarky Puppy, I mean, they have super cool tunes, you know, and I love the production on their videos and, 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 and that kind of thing. Um, I mean, that, that, that stuff is like, it's busy and it's, and it's horn heavy and figure heavy, a lot of figures to catch with the band and, and a lot of solos. And like, you gotta, you gotta know like how to support figures, you know, and by figures, I mean like, you know, phrases that the band play together that you have to play like 2D with the band. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. like that whatever you got to practice orchestrating that stuff and you know hitting hitting long notes for you know long voices on the kit for long notes and short you know uh short notes for 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 the short notes of the band Not, that, a lot of guys don't do that you know a lot of guys just stay on the ride symbol you know when they're playing big band figures bass, 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 you know and it's like weck is really the only guy that i've seen he is a scientist when it comes to orchestrating figures on the drum kit and assigning short voices to short voices on the kit, short notes and long and vice versa. 
he's the king, undisputed. It's not even close. You know, even Vinny will like, you know, he plays figures. Vinny catches all the figures, don't get me wrong. But I can tell that he's just catching the figures. He's not thinking so much about like long notes and short notes the way that other guys are. And again, it's not better or worse before everyone starts freaking out. I'm not saying better or worse. I'm just comparing great things and noticing interesting differences. That's all I'm doing. Okay? So, yeah, if you got to play that style of music, you got to be able to groove your butt off, obviously, and just catch the figures and, and yeah. Chris Perra, uh, Chris Perra, what's up, Chris, on Facebook, says, how's the hands doing? Full recovery from your pain a while ago? Yeah, pretty much. Thank you for asking, Chris. I, I had some tendon issues a couple of years ago, which was mostly related to swimming, actually. The way that I was swimming was really putting a strain. I got, like, golf elbow, tennis elbow, carpal issues, like, all at once because I was swimming a lot more. And I changed the way I was swimming and that act and actually stopped swimming because of the winter and stuff and everything went away and I went to physical therapy and then and then I was kind of back to one and, and back to a good place and then summer came back and I was like, okay, time for swimming. And the first time I swam, I felt like the pain again for the first time since like the year previous and I was like, oh, that's what's doing is because I was swimming in this particular way, like on my back, it's kind of this stupid way that I was swimming and. So now if I don't swim that way again, like I'm actually okay. Um, but I am wrestling for, I am wrestling with just like, you know, getting older and getting rusty and trying to stay in shape and that whole thing, you know. Not just drums, just like in general, you know. So I'm, these days I'm doing, a, you know, I'm doing some exercises and trying to take care of myself, eat right. And I'm doing some cold plunging. Have you guys heard of cold plunge? Like you immerse yourself in like, really cold water for like three minutes and it you know wakes up all these things in your body that are supposed to be healthy you know like it burns this particular kind of fat and it makes your body think you're gonna freeze to death and so it goes into overdrive and there's supposed to be these healthy benefits to it. and so i've been been trying it actually and it's super super interesting and it does i can say it definitely makes me feel better definitely it's a good way to just kind of reset everything and and uh you know um it's good for inflammation and just kind of gets everything kind of back to one feels great if you go to instagram and and search for like hashtag cold plunge you're just gonna get millions of videos of people like doing this it's pretty crazy i like have these like ice baths in their in their yard and they go in and you're only supposed to do like three minutes it depends on the temperature you know it's actually not quite it's actually high 70s here in los angeles it's bananas today outside it was like a summer day it's beautiful uh so i hope that answers your question chris thank you for asking um, Floyd says, thanks for all the answers. You're right. Yeah, you're welcome, Floyd. Hopefully that was helpful. Ryan Cox on YouTube says, if you magically had to never play another video game or never play drums again, which one would you give up? Wow. There's a Charlie Rose question. If I had to give up drums or video games? Well, I, I mean, that depends. Does that mean I can't make video games? Because that's how I make my living. Am I allowed to make the game, but not like play? Or never play because I gotta like I gotta make a living I gotta support myself and right now video games are paying the bills, so I guess I gotta go with games. <laughs> but if money was not a question, I mean, I don't know. I I would say that I definitely I get more emotional and <clears throat> I get more out of playing drums than I do out of playing video games. Like I love my job and designing video games and and all that that entails. Like that gives me an amazing satisfaction and I'm very lucky to be able to do that. But but if I have like a good day of drumming, especially to music that I like, that is a feeling that that is just all on its own. Can't nothing comes close to that. Nothing, you know, nothing. There's just no substitute for that. You know, like playing drums along with a song that you really like, like getting that emotional stimulation while drumming. Man, amazing. Amazing, you know. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what's going on. Let's see, we have some, uh, the Twitter, the Twitter, twi the Twitter stream is going, we're, we're on Twitter. Boom. Here's, here's me on Twitter. I think there's a whopping one person watching. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. There we go. Steve, 
Look, so, you can do it. It's okay. So that's all right, just, just hang in there. All right, I know so you're on Twitter. Uh, you're all by yourself. There's not a lot of people on there. It's all right. We got Facebook. Twitter, we got Twitter, YouTube. Twi the Twitter stream is going. We're, we're on Twitter. We got Twitch. You're fine. Boom. All right, here's hang in there. Twitter. I think there's a whopping one person watching. <laughs> Anyways. All right, so I think maybe we should wrap it up. We've been we've been playing for, yeah, we've been we did an hour and a half, right, of free information. So support the channel. Click that link. Click the link tree link. Support and um, and we'll do this again. We'll do this again soon. We'll we'll keep this going. I'm gonna continue to tweak the uh, tweak the drum sound. I want I don't know. I'm kind of interested in the hexagon rack. You know, get the toms off the bass drum. You know, I'm kind of interested in, in trying that, you know. We'll see. So feel free to contribute to that effort. <laughs> All right. Hope folks ha are having a great weekend. And um, and uh, Ryan Cox wants me to play with uh, play a Michelle Camillo cover at some point. That is very unlikely uh, because I, I try not to do something if I can't do it. it. Like, eh, I don't know. We'll see. I got something else going, another uh, music thing, another music uh, video that I need to record and edit and whatever. And we'll see one day. I hear you. This is not the first time you've asked for this. <laughs> um, yeah. My name's Steve Holmes. Thanks for hanging out. Um, we'll do this again soon. All right. Have a great...